From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening, Fairbanks, and thanks for joining us. Our top story tonight. Those in opposition of Alaska's oil tax legislation today brought out some of the state's old guard in their fight supporting a referendum on the issue. They also say they now have more than enough signatures to put a ballot before voters in 2014. Former state Senator Vic Fisher, one of the original figureheads in Alaska's fight for statehood and several other supporters of the repeal SB 21 referendum were on hand to tout the organization's success. The Alaska legislature passed the much publicized and highly controversial multi-billion dollar oil tax cut in mid-April. The vote, which also championed by Governor Sean Parnell, came on the legislature's last scheduled day of session. Critics, however, fear the impacts of SB 21 aren't well understood and will devastate Alaska's budget. In order to put their opposition on a ballot for 2014, they needed 30,000 signatures and got instead over 50,000. They say repealing the referendum is, quote, the right thing to do. Very optimistic that uh, the tax, oil tax giveaway is going to be repealed and we'll get a much more effective uh, piece of legislation coming out of this that will be much more for the benefit of all Alaska's people. This when I was out getting signatures, the number one reason that people were signing that um, petition was they know that the governor was the chief lobbyist for ConocoPhillips. And the idea that he's turning right around and giving billions of dollars to his employers, uh, I think people get that, it, that it's something smells. And that people were really pretty upset about that. The North Slope's three major players say the oil tax overhaul should lead to more investment and production. Representatives of BP, ConocoPhillips, and ExxonMobil Corp Corporation have said the latest version of SB 21 would be a huge improvement over past tax structure. Damian Bilbao, head of finance for BP Alaska, called the proposal that passed a, quote, game changer, end quote, and said the state could expect to see a shift in activity within one to two years. News Center 11's Daryl Lewis will have more on this story this weekend during the Saturday edition of the Fairbanks Evening News and News Center Final. Another public meeting has been set to update people on the status of the Stewart Creek 2 wildfire. It will start at 6.30 p.m. Thursday night at the Pleasant Valley Community Center on Chena Hot Springs Road. The Alaska Interagency Incident Management Team will discuss the progress of efforts to contain the blaze. Crews continue work on the fire, which began June 19th on a military training range 25 miles east of North Pole and has burned over 85,000 acres to date. This afternoon, fire officials said it was 57% contained and not threatening any structures. Golden Valley Electric Association has submitted an updated proposal to the Alaska Industrial Development and Export Authority for the Interior Energy Project, also known as the Interior LNG Trucking Project. The goal of the project is to bring lower cost energy to Interior Alaska. Ada requested update, updated proposals from Golden Valley, the Pentax Corporation, Spectrum LLC, and the Interior Borough Gas Utility. The Alaska Department of Law says state prosecutors will no longer negotiate plea deals on serious offenses. The policy change went into effect yesterday. The state won't enter into plea agreements on serious felonies or cases of sexual assault, sexual abuse of a minor, and domestic violence. During plea bargaining, a defendant may agree to plead guilty to a lesser charge to avoid trial or to get a shorter sentence. Nationally, almost 95% of all criminal cases are settled through such agreements. It has changed from um, the kind of sentencing where a judge hears both sides and makes a decision to the kind of sentencing where, in most cases, the sentencing decision is being made by the attorney and then confirmed by the judge. Not guilty pleas for a 24-year-old Fairbanks man in jail, accused in the brutal assault of another man in a dispute about alcohol earlier this month. Trevor Williams is charged with robbery in the first degree and felony assault in the third degree. Williams was arraigned on Tuesday and remains in jail on a no-bail status. Fairbanks police say the incident occurred outside the Clay Street Cemetery. Eyewitnesses told police the two men had been sitting on a bench when Williams began punching the victim, threw him on the ground, and stomped on his head. They say he then began grabbing things out of the victim's pocket and pockets and putting them in his own pocket. The victim told police Williams attacked him because he wouldn't share alcohol with him. 
All right, when we come back, new hangars are being built on post. That's our military report. Also, the Arctic Winter Games are having a preview over at Pioneer Park. Those stories are next. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Fairbanks Evening News. Fort Wainwright is getting ready to open the doors to the first of its new two hangars next month. Tonight we look into the construction of the two in our military report. There's been a lot of construction going on on post at Fort Wainwright. Much of it involves the two new state-of-the-art hangars that are being built for the aviation units. It's the intent with the hangars is to, one, support the troops and the mission to provide a climate controlled uh, environment where the troops can perform their mission more efficiently. And these hangars are designed to reduce energy costs anywhere from 30 to 40 percent above current standards. The cost of the hangars are around $75 million. Although that is a hefty price, those who built it say the savings are not in the cost now, but the energy reduction over time. Over the life of the building, the expense in these buildings is not the initial construction cost, it's the operations of these buildings. The uh, photovoltaic systems that are providing lighting for the buildings, um, the translucent wall panels, the additional energy insulation systems, the, uh, we have energy management uh, control systems inside these hangars that are comparable with probably anything you'd find in any of the lower 48 buildings. And some of our technology actually in Alaska and in these particular hangars would exceed what you might find in the lower 48. Finally, much discussion has been held around the historical buildings, hangars two and three. The Army is conducting an EIS study, but on top of that, they also took into account the buildings when designing the newer hangars. Um, hangars two and three, you'll notice they have a, a radial design on the roof system. The, the Army has gone through extensive efforts to try to simulate the perspective of hangars two and three, so we've actually incorporated um, a barrel roof design using current technology into both of the new hangars. So they're gonna blend in with the aesthetic historical aspect of the setting here on Fort Wainwright. And, and that was a key component. We were working with the uh, historical societies and everything, so those designs were specific to try to bring those hangars two and three into this environment. The Military Report is brought to you by Stanley Nissan. Innovation for all. A feasibility report says a planned mine in Live and Good would not break even at today's gold prices. The report was released Tuesday by International Tower Hill Mines LTD, the company planning the mine. According to the report, the current gold prices of about $1,340 per ounce are far below the about break-even point of $1,500 per ounce. At today's prices, the mine would operate at a steep loss with an initial price tag of $2.79 billion to build the mine about 80 miles northwest of Fairbanks. But Tower Hill's Vice President Tom Irwin says there is plenty of promise to the planned mine, which is expected to produce more than 8 million ounces of gold. Irwin expects the price of gold to go up. The Arctic Winter Games are coming to Fairbanks for the first time in over 20 years. This weekend, Pioneer Park is hosting a special preview. We have more now in our weekly segment. Hello and welcome back to another edition of What's Happening at Pioneer Park. Now this week we have some very special previews that are going to come to the park for you all about the Arctic Winter Games here in the summer. I'm here with Ashley Johnston, the volunteer manager for the Arctic Winter Games. Hi, Ashley. Hi. So tell me, what can we expect this year for the Arctic Winter Games here at Pioneer Park? So the Arctic Winter Games are returning to Fairbanks next March for the first time in over 20 years. If you weren't here back then to see them, you might not know all that the Arctic Winter Games has in store for us. So we're providing a fun-filled and sunny preview of the games this Sunday, July 28th here at Pioneer Park. You can pick up your passport to the games and learn all about it. Great, so tell me, what is the preview? What are we going to see here? Well, you can try yourself some of the 20 Arctic Winter Games sports from badminton to stick pole and curling. Oh. You can also learn about the Arctic Winter Games contingents that are traveling in from all over the world. It's the world's largest sport and cultural event of the Circumpolar North. It moves around every two years, and we're excited to have it back here in Fairbanks. There's more than 2,000 athletes coming in, but then they bring with them thousands of guests and visitors. So tell me a little bit more about Sunday. You said something about prizes. What can people expect, and what can, you know, what can they expect to see here? Sure. Well, when you pick up your passport, you visit all these stations to earn prizes like free ice cream, free train rides, free mini golf, and all sorts of fun stuff. I'm here, free ice cream. Thank you so much, Thanks, Ashley. Stephanie. We'll see you Sunday. Thank you. Today's vendor spotlight is Bush Babies, offering traditional carvings by artists from Fairbanks and rural Alaska. 
There's so much that you can expect happening here at the park with the Arctic Winter Games preview. But before we leave, we cannot forget to give you your trivia question of the week. And we're going to stick with that theme, the Arctic Winter Games. So get your thinking caps on. When was the last time that the Arctic Winter Games was hosted here in Fairbanks? Go to webcenter11.com and enter for your chance to win some really great prizes because that's what's happening this week at Pioneer Park. All right, Joe Cook is joining us now with a look at some sports. What's, uh, what's on the plate today? Yeah, well, you know, a couple of schedules were released today for the okay. upcoming winter seasons for a couple of teams up on the hill. We'll take a look at those. Plus, the Gold Panners could be on the brink of an ABL regular season title. All right. We'll break down all the scenarios coming up next in sports. Hello, Interior Alaska. Joe Cook here in the Sports Seat for you this Wednesday evening. The weekend is just around the corner, but let's get to tonight's sports. Last night, the Alaska Gold Panthers generated some momentum going into the last week of regular season ABL play. Coming off a 3-2 win over the Anchorage Bucks, the Panthers split a doubleheader with the Chinooks. Chugiak took the first game 3-1 and only allowed three hits. Alex Rabinowitz had a solo home run, his fourth of the year, to prevent the shutout. But Mike Ramirez suffered his first loss of the year for the Panthers. In game two, it flip-flopped. Alaska allowed just two hits while going for nine singles. Three players had two hits and three pitchers, and the defense were dialed in, not allowing a run en route to a 2-0 shutout victory for the Gold Panthers. Now it all comes down to this. After 10 days on the road, the Gold Panthers will take on the Matsu Miners this Thursday at Grotto Memorial Park at 7 p.m. For game one, the last series of the regular season, this series will determine the regular season title. Alaska is 4-6 and six in their last 10 games, but they are a half game back of the Matsu Miners. But they do have some momentum, winning two of their last three on the road. The Gold Panthers are 19 and 12. The Matsu Miners are 19 and 11. The Miners could increase their lead with a win over the Glacier Pilots tonight. The Anchorage Bucks could shake up the final standings if the Panthers end up splitting with the Miners. The Bucks are only one and a half games out of first, and they played the last place, the last place Chinooks in the three-game series this week. But it's simple. If the Panthers go 4-0 or 3-1, they'll win the ABL regular season title. The ABL tournament starts on Monday, the 29th. Sticking with baseball, another local, te local team is gearing up for their end of the season as well. The Fairbanks 49ers will be in the American Legion Baseball State Tournament tomorrow. The 49ers open the tournament against Kenai Post 20 at 11 a.m. in Mulcahy Stadium. The 49ers are last seed with a 10 and 14 10 and 15 record. The state tournament is a double elimination tournament and goes on for seven days. Wasilla Post 25 is the top seed going 18 and 4 in league play and 22 and 7 overall. Juno Post 35 is the two seed with 17 league wins. South Anchorage Post 4 is third and Chugat Post 33 is fourth. If the Niners win, they will play Juno in the winner's bracket. The winner of the Constellation bracket will get a shot at the title. If the Constellation team wins, they'll have an if necessary game to determine the champion. Today, the WCHA released its 2013-2014 composite schedule. The Alaska Nanix enter their first season in the WCHA this winter. All 10 teams will play 28 games, 14 home and 14 away with conference teams, playing five WCHA teams four times each and four other conference members two times each. Conference play starts on October 25th. The Nanix open their conference schedule against Northern Michigan on November, on November 1st at the Carlson Center. For a link to the full WCHA schedule, go to Webson11.com's sports page. And speaking of schedules, today the Nanix skiing team releases 2013-2014 schedule. The Nooks will open the season on December 7th in Anchorage for the 10th Nordic Cup against the Seawolves. UAF won the cup last year 78-48. Then in January 2014, they'll be in Midway, Utah for the U.S. Nationals, which is four days of competition. After that, the team will travel to Cable, Wisconsin for the Telemark Distance Series on January the 18th. Mid-February will be the NCAA Central Region Championships. There, the Nanak women will try to defend their title, and the men hope to win it all after finishing second a year ago. The ultimate goal is their March Madness. March 16th will be the start of the NCAA Championships back in Utah. The team hopes to send six NCAA qualifiers, three women and three men. For the full schedule link, just go to websonelemon.com's sports page. And lastly tonight, another Fair Bankson is bringing medals to the Golden Heart City. Grandma can go. Jane Lanford won the gold for the 55 through 59 age group 10K race, the National Senior Games in Cleveland in, on Saturday. And yesterday, Lanford earned the bronze in the 5K race. The 58-year-old finished the race in 23 minutes and 13 seconds. Margaret Morgan of Rootstown, Ohio, won the age group with a 22:34 time. Sherry Pick 
Pipkin from Colleyville, Texas got the silver. Karen Newman from Old Greenwich, Connecticut was the overall winner in 21 minutes and 38 seconds. Fellow Poor Banks and Linda Unsicker placed 13th out of 18 runners in the 65 to 69 age division with a 32 minute, 29 second time in the 10K. The Alaska International Senior Game starts on August 9th at Pioneer Park for the Gala Games. And that'll do it for sports tonight. Thanks for rocking with me for a little while. For more KTBS Sports, just log on to Twitter, YouTube, WebSternLevin.com. You can also get our mobile app. Stay cool, Alaska. Your full weather forecast is coming up next, and we'll catch you next time. Good evening, Fairbanks. Stephanie Woodard here in the weather seat for Mr. Mike Schultz, who is off for the week enjoying some much-needed vacation. Big shoes to fill, but let's start off with our Fairbanks Almanac and let you know all about the weather tonight. Normal high for today is 71 degrees. Normal low is at 52 degrees. We're actually pretty close to those temperatures today. Record high for this day was set back in 1968 at a hot 89 degrees. As for the low, 35 degrees set back in 1917. The sun rose this morning at 426 a.m. and the sunset is at 1129 p.m., giving us a grand total of 19 hours and 3 minutes of daylight, diminishing time of 7 minutes from yesterday. All right, let's take a look at current weather conditions across our state. Starting up north, Barrow, as I said yesterday, is a cold 39 degrees with clouds. As for Fairbanks, we're starting to see some rain in the area, and that will continue into tomorrow. The southeast is currently under cloudy skies with some showers diminishing for them. As for the Anchorage Bowl, pretty nice there with ideal temps and skies. The southwest is as well under cloud coverage today with cooler temperatures. All right, time now to slide on down to the lower 48. For those of us with travel plans or family there, let's see what's going on weather-wise. It looks like the showers and thunderstorms have moved on past the New York area, but are still continuing over Miami with hot temperatures there in the 90s. As for the south, Dallas is now under some rain and thunderstorms, as well as the Minneapolis area. Hot, hot, hot temperatures remain over both Las Vegas and Phoenix in triple digits there. Seattle has remained in the 80s, no precipitation there, so good for travel. All right, back to Alaska for tomorrow, starting as always up north. Mixed bag of weather there with some showers possible. Um, Barrow can expect to see warm, can expect to warm up, excuse me, from that cold 39 degrees today to nearly the mid 40s. Fort Yukon will still have temperatures in the 70s for their Thursday. Back to the interior weather, we can expect to see some possible showers tomorrow as well as Healy with temperatures for both areas in the 70s. To the southeast forecast, diminishing showers there, but can still accept, they can still expect to see some rain in both Juneau and Ketchikan. Temperatures in the 60s there. Over to the southwest, showers in the forecast that seems to be the trend for our state tomorrow. Temperatures there are in the 60s consistently. Lastly, on to the south central bowl. Their good streak may break tomorrow, and they could see some cloud coverage rolling in for the region. Temperatures across that area will be a little cooler as well. All right, back to the interior weather for our evening forecast. Tonight we can expect to see cloud coverage with a possibility of some scattered rain. Temperatures will remain in the 50s. As for tomorrow, we'll see decreasing clouds with another possibility of showers in the morning, especially to the east of Fairbanks. Temperatures for us tomorrow will remain in the mid-70s. And finally, our five-day outlook as we go into the end of our work week, Friday and Saturday will be partly cloudy. Temperatures in the upper 70s at night in the 50s. Sunday we can expect a little bit more cloud coverage. The showers have moved from Monday now to Tuesday. You know how Mother Nature likes to play that game, so we'll see if it happens at all. Hopefully it won't. Saturday looks good. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday day. Spe special day on Saturday. Uh huh. That's Happy right. It's my wife's to birthday. You. Oh, yeah, wife's wife. birthday. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, you too. Yes. Okay. Special day. Leo's okay. unite. <laughs> <laughs> on the cusp of cancer, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Happy it's going to be a great day. It looked like temperatures yeah. in the 80s, hopefully. So yeah. I thought we were no done rain. with those temperatures for, for this summer, but apparently not. Yes, good. come back for my birthday. Good yeah. stuff. Ooh, and Mike Schultz too. will be back then to, uh, nice. to bring you guys the weather. Hard mm -hmm. shoes to fill there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> good job, though. All Thanks. right, that will do it for this broadcast. We're glad you could join us. Coming up on NBC Nightly News, the new NBC Wall Street Journal poll how Americans are feeling about the economy, Congress, and race relations in America. That's all coming up next with Brian Williams. And for all of our news, weather, and sports, you can go to webcenter11.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. YouTube. And just and everywhere <laughs> online. In our apps, everything. Yes. Yeah, we are everywhere. everywhere. We'll everywhere. text you, too. If you sign up for our text, yep, you, can sure. you can text breaking to 33733, three, three, and we will get you all the breaking news right to your mobile phone. Right, normal right text away. rate supplied. Yes. Don't forget that. Yep. Okay, from all of us here at the News Center, we hope you have a pleasant evening.